Uh, first thing is defining what integration is. So there's a number of different components of integration. There's the integration between, uh, let's say, our site and an email marketing system, uh, or between us and Google Analytics. Those are kinds of integrations that are typically done inside the site itself. The integrations I really want to talk about are the ones that are between backend systems of record and our system of reference. So Insight tends not to be the system of record. It's not the thing that has the final say of the data, but it's the, the site that needs a lot of this data in order to operate. So for example, customers. Now customers are usually stored in a CRM system or an ERP system, and we need to be able to sync those data, like customers, into the website so that we can accommodate all the things that we do, especially in a B2B website. Even though you could manage everything you need to within Insight Commerce and our admin council, we've got all the constructs available. Sales reps, terms, codes, payment methods, uh, uh, customers, products, all these things are all there. We don't want to make our customers have to enter this data more than once. There should be one system of record, the master record. Now that's typically in the ERP. That's the most common place for this data to live. Product data may live in a product information management system. Some customer data might live in a CRM system. So we had a particular problem that we wanted to solve uh, in terms of how to get that data synced up into the website. And we came up with an integration architecture, a whole framework, if you will, of how to define the stuff in metadata so that it was easily maintained. And so several years ago, we looked at the problem and said, there's got to be a better way to do it. And we designed and developed an entire approach to integration where we use integration jobs using integration job definitions. So through metadata and configuration, we actually configure these jobs. We can run them in series. So every night we kick off the start job and let's say it does sales reps, then it does uh, customers, then products, then customer products, then order history, invoice history, that sort of thing to get that data synced up to the website. And we've got lots of capability around doing the mapping of these things. Uh, and it prevents you from either having to handwrite customizations uh, to do integration or to use a third party tool often uh, what are called iPaaS systems, uh, in, uh, integration platform as a service, things like Dell Boomi or Jitterbit. So many of our competitors would use those kind of tools, uh, which are fine tools or very generic tools, but we want to keep this simple for our customers. So for example, if you want to add another field um, into the product master file that comes from your ERP, it's a matter of simply opening up the job, adding the field in, mapping it to let's say a custom property and you're done. So within a couple of seconds, you can add additional fields in and continue to and completely monitor that entire process. So uh, when you run the jobs, it creates a job log. So if there are any problems or any errors are encountered, you can see it. We end up uh, sending a job status report every morning of all the jobs that ran, which will show up anything that didn't complete. So we've got it completely embedded in our application, the entire capability of doing this. Uh, sometimes it's called ETL, uh, Extract, Transform, and Load. We can pull all this data from a source system securely from behind the firewall and get it into the website for processing. What this facilitates is not having, having duplicate effort. You can enrich the data within our admin console if you need to. Uh, so if it, not all the data comes over from the ERP or the other source systems, you can augment it. Um, and it all happens automatically. So as changes are made in the source system, they automatically flow, flow through into the website and to your customers.